Hey, everybody, this is Ramon Ray, founder of SmartHustle.com, where we inspire and educate small business owners to start and grow successful businesses so they can live the lives they want in support of their families and their communities. I'm so glad to have you with me today. If you're hearing the sound of my voice or the sound of our upcoming guest, Rob Daniel of Intuit, we'd love you to give a five-star review. If you don't like what we're saying, still give us a five-star review. Either way, we win and you win. Rob Daniel, so glad you're with us today. We have quite a bit to talk about. I think we're going to touch on a new offering from Intuit, uh, QuickBooks, and love for you to unpack that today. And first, feel free to say hello and tell us a bit who you are and what excites you in the world. All right, <laughs> Welcome, Raymond. Rob. Thank you very much for the, uh, the intro. So we, uh, you know, at QuickBooks, I lead our financial products. Uh, so that includes our capital banking and cash flow products for our small business customers. So I lead the product teams that span those areas of the company. And I've been here for about two and a half years. And today, you know, we'll go into it, but we're excited to share a bunch of great product launches that we have focused on in the last three months to just really help support small businesses as they grow into and out of the, uh, the pandemic. And then just generally um, for small businesses across the U.S. I love it. It sounds exciting. And if you want, you're welcome to touch on a bit where you were before, what interests you. Do you like to have peanut butter or do you like to prefer <laughs> butter on your toast? Whatever you wish, you're welcome to, or we can dive right into it. All right. No, I'll do it. Um, before into it, I spent uh, a number of years at Uber working in a similar space where we provided financial services to our drivers uh, and our riders. So our drivers, we provided access to debit cards and other financial instruments to just help them um, get paid on the Uber platform. And that particularly was relevant in markets like India and Brazil and um, Mexico, where the unbanked population is quite big. And then for riders, we built credit cards and other loyalty and incentive programs to help drive just further engagement with the Uber platform and across the, the you know, eats, rides and other services uh, like uh, mobility that the company offered. And then prior to that, just briefly, um, I spent in about half, better, better part of a half a decade at Facebook leading our messenger products as we built out monetization and payment capabilities to better enable customers to uh, experience kind of commerce transactions with businesses within the messenger ecosystem. So you're like um, the money guy. Is it fair to say? Could I call you Rob Money Guy Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I've been called worse. That's for sure. Um, you know, my, you know, Farther back in my career, I did start in investment banking and in kind of traditional financial services for large enterprises. And I, I became like very uninspired by that for a number of personal reasons. And so transitioned into technology and working um, with software and Silicon Valley companies. And that was partly to get away from what was traditional financial services. But I found that my career has slowly brought me back to serving kind of customers through financial services, because when you take an approach from a company that's kind of like a software-based business, you can start bringing um, some of the great experiences and better economics and better, you know, lower fees and better access to embedded kind of finance and capabilities within these software products that traditional financial services kind of have a, a harder time doing. Absolutely. And so, in fact, I've kind of come full circle back to it. So, yeah, I guess it's fair to call me a money guy or a financial services guy. But it's very much and very important to me that that is in the context of serving customers needs yes. through other kind of software and product platforms. No, I love it. I'm proud to let you know that I think my rating with Uber is about a 4.9999999999. Yeah. It annoys me that it's not like the perfect five, but we'll get there one day. Um, and I do want to ask uh, Rob a broad question, not necessarily focused on uh, Intuit per se, unless you wish to answer it that way. Mm. But when large brands do these money things, and you can reword the question how you want, is it a through relationship between the consumer the brand and like, is there some big bank behind there? Or often is it the, the brand, whether Facebook, Uber or Intuit, financing it, if you understand my layperson's yeah. question, like how does that yeah. work at a high level? Yeah, and I, you know, it's oftentimes a spectrum. So, okay. you know, to give the big incumbent financial institutions credit is that over decades, they have, you know, in many cases built phenomenal brands, phenomenal relationships, very deep trust around their stability as, you know, a place you can trust to put your money or access capital. And there are instances, for example, where um, Marcus by Goldman Sachs or in the way that Stripe kind of approaches some of their financial services and offerings for, for small businesses and just businesses generally, and that the combination of that trifecta is actually a very compelling value prop um, to the end customers because there's a lot of trust and embedded there. And then there are, there are cases where, you know, 
co companies, and this is not to say these other uh, you know prior mentioned companies don't fit the bill too, but a place like QuickBooks that has like a deep kind of reputational trust and relationship with small businesses where we don't necessarily explicitly need the brand recognition of other financial services company, but we do need some of the regulatory capabilities that they bring. And some of the, you know, decades long um, relationships with the regulators and financial kind of infrastructure that they've built so that we don't have to rebuild all of that capability. So in our case, you know, we work with specific partners to fund loans, to bank customers, to process payments. And we more look to leverage that technology infrastructure to bring products to market for our customers, whereas our brand itself and our relationship with the customer does most of the work from, you know, being that front and center, um, you know, brand and relationship with the customer, knowing that back behind it is deep years of technology and compliance and regulatory support uh, through our partners that we work with. For sure. No, I'm a customer I'm on the yeah. dashboard, I think 49 times a day, give or take. Um, So, you know, and you see the little announcements or icons or whatever. So I get it. So let's dive into the announcement, Rob, and I'll let you guide that conversation. I mean, I think there were two that I saw recently, but feel free to paint the picture however you want that uh, yeah. into it. And let's, let me demystify this for me, Rob. Yeah. Do I call you, do I say into it, blah, blah, blah? Or do I say QuickBooks, blah, blah, blah? I know yeah. there was some rebranding years ago, like into it has a a family of products, but that's right. Books. Help us understand that. that. That's right. <laughs> I'll help paint the kind of picture. So Intuit itself is the parent company sure. that we we have the privilege of owning and operating products that include Credit Karma, which we recently acquired. Mm -hmm. Of course, TurboTax and all of our tax business that we provide to consumers. And then we also have QuickBooks. Um, we also have Mailchimp that we recently mm -hmm. acquired that I helps that. Them, that cool. provide like additional small business services. And then we also have Mint, which is, you know, the financial kind of services kind of super offering that allows people to pull all their um, financial services into one place and understand kind of their financial health. Um, so Intuit owns all of those companies. The way we are organized is that we have a small business group that I am a part of, and we lead all the offerings for small business, which equi uh, essentially means that we operate QuickBooks sure. and we operate MailChimp now. Got it. Um, so so feel free to refer books. to us as QuickBooks. Into it, QuickBooks, but that's what we're talking about today. Rob, I think there's only one company you're missing that you should purchase. Can I make a recommendation? Please do. Godiva. That's what you should purchase. Godiva. Godiva, Godiva the chocolatier. Then you'll be yes. like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's dive into yeah. it, Rob. Help us understand what the problem has been. And I believe as a small business owner myself, the problem, ready access to cash, but you can say it better. And yep. then what highlight those two recent announcements and feel free to unpack it as far back perfect. as you want. The floor is all you Perfect. Have. Yeah. And so our whole organization within QuickBooks, where we start, we focus on money and financial services offerings and even writ larger across QuickBooks is that small businesses have an incredible hard, hard time managing just their cash flow. Sure. So just the money that comes in and out of their business on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. And if you step back and you think of, you know, larger businesses with maybe 50 to 100 employees or more, millions of dollars in revenue, these companies are established enough where they will have a financial services team or um, a finance or a treasurer team that is keeping track of the company's money. But the core businesses that we serve on QuickBooks they are often business kind of owner operators and they are wearing multiple hats. They are, you know, doing the, the service delivery to their customers. They are balancing the books with the help of an accountant and they are thinking about the financial health and growth and funding the growth of their company or enterprise. And what we are trying to do is help take the burden of that cash flow management, that money management off of the owner operator and giving them tools and services where they increasingly feel like they have the sophistication and the leverage of a finance team. And we do that by stepping in and not only providing a great kind of layer of software services that help bring those experiences and those decision-making and insight services to life, but underlying that we build financial services like bank accounts, um, access to capital, which we'll talk about in a moment, payment services, bill payment services, all to not only provide that movement of money for the customer, but the more we tie those services together, we give the business a full picture of their money, but then also help move that money more efficiently and more seamlessly in one place so that customers aren't moving across all these different disparate offerings to, to manage their business. They can all do it from within QuickBooks. And that removes the cognitive burden. It removes the, the risk of making a bad decision that might put you in a cash flow shortfall in the future and ensuring that you can do the basics of 
most importantly, paying your employees and then paying your bills and then smartly taking excess cash you may have for a moment in time and investing it towards the future into expanding the business, advertising and acquiring customers, or even super important for businesses, especially small business operators to not forget is you've got to pay yourself. And how do you know how much you should be paying yourself You know, if you don't have some rule of thumb or at least you're aware of kind of how that paying yourself would impact kind of the rest of your business's obligations? I love that. And talking about the dashboard, just one one clarification, Mm -hmm. Rob. So would this be that I may still, and again, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but feel free. Yeah. You Is this so that I may have multiple bank accounts, but QuickBooks can be the central place where I'm working or in partnership with the banks? I may not even touch a bank per se. All that can be within QuickBooks right. or am I totally screwing things up? No, no, you're, you're connecting the dots super okay. well. And so I'll clarify is like, first off, yes. You know, as part of QuickBooks and just historically getting your books reconciled, is we have a very robust way for you to connect bank accounts and pull in your bank feeds so you can see everything in one place. We have abstracted that from just accounting um, view and reconciliation and the bookkeeping work. And we have created a very holistic experience where you can see all of your account balances in one place. And then we also project forward using all that historical data, what your cash flow is likely to be over the next 90 days. So, you're, you, you know, I was speaking about Mint just a moment ago. Think of this as Mint, but for your small business, where you're getting this perfect view into your business today and a really good, accurate view of what it might look like in 90 days going forward. And that layer helps inform you making smart business decisions. And so to your next, your next question, we don't enable you to move money from like your Bank of America account to a Chase account from some other account. That is, that is something that you need to go to these other services to do because we just don't have the uh, technical or regulatory infrastructure to enable that um, today in the US. We can talk about the UK and other places, but in the US, unfortunately, that doesn't exist. So what we do is we offer our own financial products that allow you to very closely relate all those insights and actions we're recommending. And instead of kicking you out to another website where you need to log in and move money around, you can start doing it all in one place because you're using the bank account that we provide you. You're using the capital and financial services and bill payments and payment services we provide you. So that allows you to take action on those things much more seamlessly. And because we're providing each of those services together, the connections between them is much tighter. You know, if you ask Bank of America to talk to JP Morgan, they will, but it usually takes three to four days of, you know, an ACH transfer or something like that. But when you're doing that money movement or those financial decisions within our ecosystem and with our connected services, then that money, you know, moves instantly. It moves for free. We don't charge you for it. Um, or you get access to capital sooner. And so we are just connecting those dots for customers in a way that has really never been done before. Got it. And then one more follow-up. I think you were going to talk about something else. So forgive me. I hope you didn't lose that thought. But mm-hmm. one other follow-up is that um, because uh, uh, QuickBooks is able to see everything, you see more of mm-hmm. my business than I probably know myself, <laughs> you yeah. know, machines and AI, is it any easier? If that's a fair question, meaning I go to another uh, lender or whatever, right. they don't know me from Adam, you know, especially if I'm brand new, like, who are you? I got to show all this information and 4 yep. million stacks of documents. Is it a fair question to say that you know, QuickBooks has already been seen. Ramon's been in business 27 years. Right. He does blah, 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 whatever the details may be. And it's a some percentage easier or not. Really oh, it is, it is. It is the it is in the top two things that customers tell us they love the most is how easy it is to apply for capital. And it's because, as you mentioned, you know, you don't need to like print out all your financial statements from banks and then send it in. You don't need to like gather a bunch of information, send it in. It's already there and connected within QuickBooks because that is your financial kind of operating system as a small business. We, with your permission, are able to use that data, read it, and then make underwriting decisions for you. And so not only is it fast, you know, the turnaround times are very quick on responses, but just the prep work and the question and answer process that you typically go through with a small business lender that usually involves a phone call or maybe going into a bank branch. Um, which has been really challenging over the last two years, as you can imagine, we're doing it all online, all digitally, and it is just customers rave about it. They love how simple and easy it is. The other thing they rave about is that so many of our customers are getting access to capital through us where they have historically been denied by their traditional financial institution. And it's not only because we have access to perhaps better data than the financial institutions have, but we know our customer base so well, and we see so much of their historical and future you know, cash flows, we can take a unique approach to underwriting these customers. And it doesn't always mean that we're um, uh, underwriting in a sense that we're underwriting 
more to in total than the, the partner banks. But it means just when we have a unique view on things, it allows us the opportunity to underwrite a different set of customers sometimes than, than other banks. So that expands access to capital and really fulfills the mission that we're on, which is financing kind of small businesses, particularly those that are underserved by the tra traditional financial institution kind of incumbent base. I love that. It sounds like the movie yeah. Moneyball. I don't know if you saw it. I forgot who that, who the, yeah, yeah I mean, it's not, I don't know. It's just an yeah. analogy I had, you know, it's like there are bigger teams, but if we can crunch the data, you know, we can do an edge. So yeah. Rob, do you remember, was that the full thought or was there something else you yeah. had? Please go ahead. Well, I, I was going to come back to, um, and you, you primed it. So I'm going to just dive into it as like, you know, I've mentioned very briefly, we have, you know, a checking account and a bank account for customers. We have a payment service that allows you to process invoices and in-person payments that we do about a hundred billion dollars of payments on that every year. We do bill payments. Um, we also process payroll, which is something like $115 billion of you know, distributions to employees. So we're moving all this money around. And what we're excited to announce, I think it was just um, around the new year, was we have launched two brand new offerings that we're, we're very, very um, optimistic about how they're going to change the lives of both our small business customers and then our small business customers and employees. And so the first is that we have announced what we call Get Paid Up Front. And this is for our invoicing customers that process payments with us. We are extending them the equivalent of an invoice financing feature. So when you process an invoice, you can wait the 30 days or 90 days or whatever the payment terms are that you have with your end customer for them to pay you. Or you can work with us and we will advance those funds to you up front. And so the same day that you send an invoice to a customer, we are giving you the ability to take access to those funds and then use them in your business today. And what we do is we charge a 3% fee upfront for you to access those funds. And then when you get paid by your end customer, those funds pay off the outstanding balance of what you advanced. And we don't further charge any additional fees for processing the payment or, or anything. So it effectively is netted out with what you would have paid um, in the first place in many cases. And so this is a great and exciting way that we it have is. to empower our customers that are using us for payments and invoicing to increase the terms of uh, cash that they have in their business and redeploy them elsewhere. So that's what we call get paid up front. And that's our invoice financing feature that we are, lit, we are we rolled it out to hundreds of thousands of customers and we're gonna keep going. The response so far has been incredible. The average loans that people are taking out are higher than our, our expectation. The repeat use of people coming back and beginning to use it, it's just all flowing really nicely. And so we are, we are in the exciting phases of rolling out and seeing kind of hockey stick growth for that, that product. The second product that we- For sure, as a small business owner myself, I mean, you know, like, hey, Ramon, yeah. can you do this or this activity? Sure, we'll pay you in 500 days. Really? I mean, hello? So that's an exaggeration, but you get yeah. my point. Continue on the second part. No, product. no, it, you know, and it, it, it reminds me of another exciting aspect of this, which is because we, you know, have this platform of, you know, six or seven million small businesses just, you know, in on QuickBooks alone, we see both sides of the equation often. So oftentimes when you send an invoice to a customer, we know who that is. And it may yes, be yes. a large established Fortune 500 company. It could be just another small business on our platform, but we're able to assess and see that rest. So we have like this unique access to just understanding two parts of the equation that help us extend capital to these people that perhaps could not if they went into a bank and wanted to get a loan or wanted to go get their invoices financed elsewhere. So bringing that all together really speaks to like what is really nice about doing it on the QuickBooks platform. And of course, it's all to our earlier point, it's all seamless and kind of in one place. You don't need to go off to another financial and apply for this or apply for a line of credit. It's just right there. You're already sending invoices on QuickBooks. Now you can send the invoice and then you can advance the funds immediately. So very simple, very the easy, very, low burden. Yeah. The very complicated name that nobody can understand, get paid up front. I say that very jokingly. I mean, that's like yeah. obvious what it does. Yeah. Okay. What's the other one? Yeah. Thank you for your patience as I clarify. Yeah. That. No, I love the question. So this next one is what we call early pay. Mm -hmm. And this is for employees or sorry, employers that offer and process payroll through our platform. So these uh, employers are constantly looking at ways to add more value to their employees in a cost efficient manner, right? It's an incredible, we've got the great resignation going on. We have an incredibly like diverse and global talent pool that all businesses are going after. And oftentimes it's hard for a large business or sorry, a smaller business 
to compete with the perks or the benefits of larger players. Well, with early pay, what we're doing is we're allowing customers that use our payroll system to allow their end employees to access funds early. And so what this does is this allows them to say like, hey, my paycheck typically for you know the month of February is maybe $1,000, let's say. And so my paycheck's $1,000, I get paid maybe twice a month, maybe once a month, depending on the employer. Um, but I don't access that those funds until it's paid out, but yet I'm accruing work in a value to the company you know, two weeks at a time, and I don't get paid until the end of that, or maybe it's a month at a time until the end of that. And so what we're doing is allowing um, these employees to advance those funds and get access to them before the paycheck hits. And this is, again, uniquely we're positioned to do this because we're already processing payroll for almost, I think, well north of 15 million um, uh, end employees in the U.S. already um, in this year. And so advancing funds at that scale is just a really exciting way to think about not only improving the financial lives of um, you know, employers through better retention and better um, relationship with their employees, but also through the end employee who's getting access to funds in a more quick manner. And how does that work on the employee end? Is there a, some internal button or when, 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 employee, when employers are using QuickBooks, there's an employee integration already or somehow the employer doesn't have to do anything? It's all on the employee side or just how does that work uh, in principle? Yeah, that's right. So the employer um, has the ability to kind of effectively turn this on for their employees. Okay. And the employees can then selectively choose when to um, access the funds. Got it. And so this is, this is something that we've built in connection with um, our payroll team that, that manages both the interactions that employees have with services to law, you know, sign up and get registered for direct deposit and do their payroll with their company. And then the software that we expose to the companies for uh, processing payroll through us, which we call QuickBooks Payroll. I love it. How far uh, Rob Intuit has come. I've been using Intuit since it was on a floppy disk. Um, you know, like <laughs> that's how much yeah. and you would uh, send your QB files. And I know the legacy version is still out there, but how far uh, QuickBooks has definitely come. Uh, if you can, and I'm sure you'd be delighted to, can you just show us your whiteboard for the next five years of uh, what's what's going to come out? <laughs> what right. can we expect? But seriously, in your words, I mean, Intuit yeah. clearly in QuickBooks is, is driving and not only my words, the yep. dashboard for small businesses, the central repository of finance, of course, with MailChimp, that's a whole other ballgame there, but mm -hmm. uh, finances. But then you're adding services that make it sense for the, the day-to-day -day needs of small business. Uh, right. Is there anything else, whatever else you can share that you see uh, coming? And, and yes. it could be just yeah. perfecting what you have already. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, and I'll, uh, I'll try to break it into buckets of three just so okay. we keep it, you know, uh, memorable for the sure. for the audience here and not too too in the weeds. But you know, in the first bucket is just when we think of what we're currently offering to our QuickBooks customers, we have a fairly comprehensive set of financial offerings. There are a few pieces that we are missing and that we will be adding over the next call it three to four years. Um, and, and in many cases sooner than that. The first is that we um, well when it comes to access to, to capital and access to credit, we, um, we have a term loan business where you get large kind of lump, some, uh, lumps of money kind of over multiple year periods. And then now we have invoice financing. We think there's still a big opportunity in just a basic revolving line of credit for small businesses so that they have access, irregardless of whether they access um, process payments or invoicing with us, but they just need access to on-demand capital. So we're excited about exploring opportunities in that space. Secondly, Many businesses that are using our bank account products or our checking account product, they love storing money with us. They love structuring their money with us. They also want to be able to spend money, not just on a debit card, but with a credit-based product. And so you can imagine us going into small business kind of spend products, which could be some combination with our line of credit or its own standalone kind of credit card offering. And then the last area is once we have, as we have all these pieces in place and we start continue to bring them together, there's a lot of automation that we can do and already are beginning to do. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. We understand sales tax very concretely for our customers. We also understand income tax. We understand when your payroll is coming due. We understand when your bills are coming due. So the first step we're taking to automate some of this money management and structuring and payments is we're going to begin setting aside funds for our customers based on their sales volume. And we're going to set sales tax volume aside in its own kind of account within the checking uh, product so that you always know that you have that ability to pay the sales tax due when it comes. 
We're going to do the same for income tax. We've got an opportunity around payroll and large bills as well. So that money movement automation is absolutely going to become coming to life over the next six months. But that will be you know, a multi-year journey for us as we continue to burn down the rote money management tasks that small businesses have to do. We're going to start taking that burden on ourselves and letting the customers basically kind of let us put it on autopilot and they will kind of affirmatively confirm or deny certain money movement suggestions that we have. So that's kind of one bucket of work. Yeah, oh, I love it. As a business owner myself, I mean, I go through that myself and I love that. I mean, it's just, I, I have a third party, uh, you know, very famous, you know, app that I use, set up many buckets, many envelope systems in there and I transfer yep. money automatically, you know, just yep. so I don't forget, oh, that's right. Oh, a lot of money to the IRS <laughs> or whoever else soon. So I think those are smart things. I love that third bucket um, yeah. uh, coming from QuickBooks because that yeah. is my, you know, that's the, for me, maybe for other different, but my yeah. uh, account of record. So I think it's exciting yep. Yeah, uh, for sure. Cool. And then two other ones that um, are part of like our three to five year kind of horizon, but in many cases, you know, I think kind of three years or shorter just because I, I want to like keep, you know, focus <laughs> on what we're going to ship and be actionable. Um, and the second is that historically QuickBooks has really only provided services to customers that pay for accounting and pay a mm -hmm. subscription fee. We have a product in market um, that we call Money by QuickBooks, and it is an early, you know, first kind of learning journey that we're on, where we're beginning to provide financial services. And you can imagine in the fullness of time, it will include all of the financial services across banking and capital and cash flow and, and um, payments that I just mentioned. But we're going to make it available increasingly to customers before they are ready to subscribe for, to accounting. Because many businesses get started just in a conversation like this or just informally people realize they have a business idea or they realize they've been informally doing something like babysitting or landscaping and they're ready to professionalize. And so we help provide that on-ramp to becoming a growing and established business. And the first thing you need as one of these, what we call early starts, is you don't need accounting right off the, you might need accounting right off, but you don't realize it. Um, but what you really need is to get paid. You need a place to store your money. As you're growing, you might need access to capital to manage your cash flow. And so we're increasingly providing those services to these businesses before they formalize into, you know, getting an EIN, having someone think about their books, and really growing into things like payroll or tax. And so we're going to onboard and continue to serve a broader audience of customers through these financial services. And then, you know, the third area that'll be really quick is Jeez. with the acquisition of um, MailChimp, we are very excited about extending our financial services, including invoicing, e-commerce capabilities to process payments, capital um, to fund growth of like email and other marketing campaigns and engines through, you know, a broader expansion of products where when you step back and look at it as a small business, you are going to be able to get customers with MailChimp. You are going to be able to finance growth through, uh, you know, world-class marketing channels. And then you are able to manage your business and money with our financial services. And then, oh, by the way, your books and taxes, all of that is going to be taken care of in the background, just as part of you operating your business through our platform. And you'll spend less time reconciling your books or figuring out kind of profitability and, and tax implications um, down the road because you're all operating in one place. So that is a bigger kind of three to five year kind of picture and vision about how all this starts coming together for small businesses. I love this. This means that I'm going to give you another bad idea, Rob. Anytime, by the way, you need a bad ideas, yep. you can just call me. I will give you a bad idea if you ever need it. Quick, quick book should buy a beach for all the small business who are like crushing it because like you're saving us time. We can just go to the QuickBooks beach like on Fridays because we're saving hours a month and making more money and being more profitable. So yeah. you consider it QuickBooks. You know what? I, I, would, I would characterize it as a great idea because so often what we see with our business owners is every yes. bit of time that we save them or that they put back into their business. Right. And then they're just, you know, in this mindset of like constantly working on their business when you've got to be able to step back, take some, you know, profit and income yes. and also take some time for yourself because it really is a marathon, not a sprint when you're running a business like this. So there's there's some good ideas in there. I don't know if we'll buy a beach, but we might encourage you to take vacations, yeah. No, I was talking, I was at the National Speakers Association event over the weekend and Neha Gupta, right, just an amazing rock star. And she was saying she worked six hours a week. So mm -hmm. while I disagree a bit with, you know, the four hour work week principle to some degree, but I think if you're running your business right and you're you're automating it and you have the right team in place, you know, low millions or, or mid, whatever, mm -hmm. not forget billion dollar brand, you know, not like QuickBooks, yeah. but, you know, but a small businesses, mm -hmm. it's the life we want. We're highly profitable. And then most of us are giving and serving others. That's what mm -hmm. I do. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, Rob, anything I didn't ask you or anything you wanted to share? I hope this is, hopefully this will not be our last conversation, but for today, anything that you wanted to leave us with before we uh, end this amazing discussion? No, Raymond, thank you for kind of creating the forum for us to talk about what we're building for small businesses. I think we covered most of it. So um, I really welcome any kind of questions or feedback from the audience. Um, they can reach me uh, at Rob underscore Daniel at Intuit.com if that helps. And um, I'd be happy to take feedback or encouragement from the audience on where we should be going next. I appreciate that. Hey, everybody, this is Ramon Ray, founder of smarthustle.com, where we inspire and educate small business owners to start and grow successful businesses. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, definitely give us a five-star review if you like what we're saying. If you don't like what we're saying, still give us a five-star review. And if you haven't signed up for smarthustle.com, do that. And hey, you've heard a nice discussion with Rob about the current things that QuickBooks is doing, the future things that QuickBooks is doing, and we want you on that beach. Even though QuickBooks may not be buying the beach, they'll encourage you to relax on the beach. Everybody, have a great day.